Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to the 20th episode here of the Let's Play series. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful support throughout this series, my friendos. Last episode reaching over 1,200 likes, which is fantastic. Now, of course, if you do want to continue supporting the series, by far the easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like. We are aiming for about 1,000 likes per episode in this series, my friends, and we have been smashing it so far. So if we can keep that up, that would be brilliant. Of course, if you're new around here, consider subscribing to the channel channel so you don't miss out on my future Terraria episodes here. But of course, if you want to go one further, use code Python when ordering any sleek energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. So as you can see in my inventory, we've got plenty of things that we could be getting done in today's episode. If you can't tell what we're going to be doing for the majority of it, then I don't know what to tell you, my friends. But anyways, we're starting off by switching to a mage set. That is right. But check it out, guys. There's actually a couple of accessories we can make here. The Counter Curse Mantra is part of of the recipe for the eventual ank charm which is brilliant but also we have ourselves a super mage accessory that we can make right about now so starting off here with the mana regeneration band we can upgrade that to the magic cuffs and then up to the celestial cuffs as you can see increases pickup range for mana stars restores mana when damaged and increases mana by 20 very very nice and a lot of you guys were correctly pointing out that you can go ahead and use the meteor armor with the orange zapinator. Yeah, baby. All right, so let's grab ourselves out the meteor armor once again. And let's chuck these bad boys on. We are going to grab out our orange zapinator and see just how much damage we can make it do. Let's not forget, of course, we do have ourselves the sorcerer emblem as well. If we were to reforge both of these up to menacing, we should be able to get a grand total of 23% increased magic damage. 19% from this and 4% from this. This. So there it is, the deadly orange Zapinator. And well, as you can see, similar to the gray Zapinator and space gun, the meteor armor completely nulls its mana requirement. So yeah, despite the fact that says uses 16 mana, it does not. All right, menacing sorcerer emblem. That actually didn't take too long. All right, celestial cuffs. This will be probably the more expensive of the two to uh, reforge a whole bunch. Awarding. Oh, I mean, mage sets typically don't have a lot of defense, right? Maybe we go for both of these things. I mean, menacing would have been nice to have a grand total of 23% increased damage with both of these together. But 19% is still a pretty good amount, isn't it? Alrighty, my friend. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and see if I can purchase for myself the leaf wings. I'm pretty sure we should be able to. You should be able to get those right at the start of hard mode. So I'm pretty sure it's this guy who sells them. Oh my god, there they are. <laughs> hey man, we don't have to go ahead and make any wings whatsoever. We got leaf wings straight off the rip. Oh, interesting. So according to the wiki, it actually turns out that the harpy wings are in fact better than the leaf wings. The leaf wings are basically the same tier, roughly, as the very, very basic angel and demon wings. Ah, but I'm just now realizing that we actually can't can't make the harpy wings until we have ourselves an orichalcum or mithril anvil. So actually getting the leaf wings is totally fine for now. And then yeah, a little bit later down the line, we can get ourselves the harpy wings, which give you a little bit more flight time, acceleration and height. So yeah. Oh man, they're expensive to reforge though. All right, come on. Hasty. Oh, that's not good, is it? Come on, man. I mean, either menacing or warding. I would have even take armored. But nah, that's a little bit on the steep side to reforge there, my friends, I assure you. But uh, hey-ho, it is what it is. We do still have ourselves some wings at long last. So technically speaking, the white horseshoe balloon can come off. The wings can go on. The feral claws can come off. And the sorcerer emblem can go on. And finally, the pygmy necklace can come off. And the celestial cuffs can go on. So now... This thing does 170 magic damage. And that's not even taken into consideration the variety of different attacks that it has. I'm pretty sure it has that one attack where it does 10 times the damage. Which means this thing would do 1700 damage with that rare 10 times damage attack. Wow, that is... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> That's quite something, isn't it? So next up on the odd jobs list is to actually give something a go. I've been noticing that barely any enemies ever spawn up at the Crimson Island, and that could pose a problem because we are going to need enemies to spawn up there if we want a chance of taking on the Brain of Cthulhu eventually on this single world, right? So I am going to go ahead and grab myself some water candles and some battle potions, and what I'm hoping will happen is that will be enough to the point where we get a whole bunch of enemies spawn in. Well, the good news is we are starting to get the little vicious mushrooms growing, which is good because we need those in order to make ourselves the Brain of Cthulhu summoners, right? Yeah. Oh, goodness me. All right, let's give this uh, Zappinator a bit of a go, eh? Hey, buddy. <laughs> the damage, man. The damage. Hey, bud. Come on. Give me that attack. Oh, my God. 2,004 damage. Did you see that? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Ooh, ooh, this is one spicy little weapon and setup, isn't it, my friends? All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I can't believe how powerful this weapon is, dude. Holy crap. That is fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> All right, anyways, let's go ahead and do this thing. We are going to chuck down a water candle right there. Oh, goodness me, there's another one immediately. Goodness, sweet lord. All right, hey, bud, you're going to die. Come on. <laughs> hey, man, maybe one of these days. Oh, goodness me, there's like 3,000 things spawning in. Oh, no. Why? Okay, uh, the effect of the water candle has very much been made apparent. Yes, very much increased spawn rates. Huh? Hey guys, you know what would be cool eventually? If we were able to get ourselves a wyvern banner. It is something that I don't manage to grab myself very often at all. And the damage increase would be rather incredible actually. Oh god, okay, gotta be careful. Of oh my goodness me. <laughs> Can't go oh, there's another one. Oh, goodness me. All right, what I need to do, or what I'd like to do, is try to make myself a tiny platform, like, way at the very, very, very tip top of the world, and hopefully use that as a little bit of a platform to maybe have dudes spawning down below on the island itself, and hopefully those dudes would be the Crimson Dudes. At least that's what I'm hoping will happen, because if it doesn't happen like that, then we may actually be screwed, and that whole Crimson Island conversion thingy that we did in the last episode was completely pointless. Oh, for goodness sake! <laughs> this is turning into a death touch! I'm just trying to make a platform at the very top of the world, man! Man, the wyverns are beating me to a pulp today so far. Come on, dude! Alright, well, I've got my little box sorted out. Will you go away, you stupid harpy? Let's get rid of this little uh, tower here. And let's see what happens now when we go ahead and reactivate the water candles and indeed a battle potion. Uh, I still imagine we're going to get absolutely overrun by wyverns, but I'm also kind of hoping that maybe there'll just be some crimson enemies here. I mean, come on, man. There's no way there can't be crimson enemies spawn around here. This is classed as a crimson. Oh, for God's sake, man. Ah! I really wish I was able to make this island in pre-hard mode. That would have been very, very good. <laughs> oh, this episode is turning into a big old victory for the wyvern kind. And I don't like it, man. Oh, for God's sake, another one. Uh, guys, I don't think I could do this. I think that a Sky Island was the wrong location to turn into a Crimson Biome. I hate to say it, but I think this was a waste of time. The Wyverns are always going to be a threat up there. And as long as that is the case, I don't think we're going to be able to farm anything up there. Not realistically. Ugh. That's annoying. Ah, well, I guess we'll have to move on to something else, won't we? And you know what? That something else is going to be fishing. And more to the point, 30 minutes of crate fishing. We're going to see just how many crates we can get in the space of half an hour. And uh, yeah, we've got plenty of good bait. We've got ourselves literally the best fishing rod in the entire game as well. And we have ourselves a lava proof tackle bag as well. So yeah, we should be pretty darn good in terms of having a good chance of getting good stuff, right? Although I'm just now realizing that maybe one of the other things I could bring with me for luck is a gnome. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, isn't it? The reason for doing the crate fishing in the first place, of course, is so we could get ourselves a nice little boost of hard mode oars and bars. Because, of course, as you guys may remember, we are opting not to mine 
the demon altars, right? Because by doing that, we'll have ourselves random evil blocks spreading all over the place. And if and when it comes to us trying to purify our world, that will make things a whole lot more difficult. So here we are, 123 fishing power. That's without the armor. With the armor, we have 142 fishing power. With the lava proof tackle bag, that increases it by a further 12, ladies and gentlemen. Not too bad, if you ask me. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take these poor saps out of the game. What are you guys doing? Y'all need to go away. Oh, wow. That guy just got slapped about 5 million light years away. <laughs> a titanium crate to start it off. Uh, yeah. Not too bad, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of that. There we are. Ain't no one getting to me now. <laughs> Blimey O'Reilly, we are not doing too bad in terms of getting titanium crates. We've literally got more titanium crates than wooden crates. How is that possible, man? <laughs> hey, look at that, guys. A seaside crate. Ha! That's kind of cool, actually. Oh, another crate for you, boy. Don't mind if I do. And ladies and gentlemen, we are about to activate our second potion. So three minutes in so far, a tenth of the way to our goal. So for those of you guys who don't know already, different times of day actually affect how much fishing power you have. There are certain times at night and certain times, I think, in the morning and evening where the fishing power is actually naturally at its highest, even without you going ahead and having any kind of buffs on you, right? So, yeah, it is worth going ahead and uh, researching this stuff. Hey, guys, look at that on the left. There's a star-shaped cloud. <laughs> See, check it out now, my friends. We have 117 fishing power now. So, yeah, like I say, different times of day and night give different amounts of fishing power. I mean, it's kind of similar to real life, isn't it? You know, certain times of the day, the fish is slightly more active than other times of the day. I think that's really, really cool that Terraria took that into consideration and did something similar. It gives a little bit more skill towards, you know, determining when best it is to go fishing. And now look at it, 146 fish. Fishing power. That is a crazy amount of fishing power, my friends. I'm not even entirely sure what the absolute maximum fishing power amount you can have is. But surely the amount we have now has got to be edging towards the top of that number, surely. And now look at it, guys. Now that a new day has just rolled around, look at that! 180 fishing power! That's crazy! That is utterly, utterly crazy. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some research at some point just so we can find out just how high an amount of fishing power you could really get in this game, my friends. I'd love to see just how much of an effect maximum fishing power would have on the sort of loot you get. Like, for example, I don't know, you do like an hour's worth of fishing with nothing but just a wood fishing pole versus using a top tier fishing pole like a golden fishing rod and maximize fishing power. Like, I'd love to see just how much of a difference there is. Oh, the traveling merchant has arrived. Really? I want to go see if he's got the life form analyzer, man. Ah, oh, you have to arrive on a day where I'm trying to do a big, big fishing sesh, yeah? What a son of a gun. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what. We'll go ahead and get ourselves up to the halfway point, okay? We've got one more crate potion until we're about halfway through our entire session here. And then we'll go back. We'll see what he's got. And then we'll get right back on with the second half of our fishing crate sesh. Is somebody going to tell me why the traveling merchant keeps on spawning in this little cave over here? I am very, very confused. This is now the second time I'm having to dig over to him. Why? Why are you over here? I told you before, you need to go back to merchant school and realize that spawning in a cave is not the greatest place to get customers. All right, let's have a look. What have we got here? Oh, wow, another orange zapinator. <laughs> All right, uh, no sign of the life form analyzer. Well, that's a bit sad because that means I'm now going to have to go ahead and rebury you there, sir. Sorry. All right, you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Just to sort of make things a little bit more interesting, why don't we go ahead and go fishing at a different location entirely, eh? I was thinking the jungle might be a good place to go. Maybe we get some variegated lard fish. That would be a lovely thing indeed. So, yep, still got everything on. All is well. Ladies and gentlemen, the second half of our fishing trip. Let's get it on! Oh, look at that! There's a giant tortoise! <laughs> you may have 1,400 health, but there is absolutely no way I don't think you'll ever be able to get to me. Ha! Ah, suck on that, tortoise! Yeah! I mean, you'll probably come back and murder me later on in the series, but still! <laughs> oh! Uh, 
Well, I sure hope he doesn't learn to go through that platform and down here, because otherwise then I am kind of screwed. I have to admit, ladies and gentlemen, I think out of all of my pylon bases that I've made in the world so far, I think this one might just take the title as my favourite one. I kind of love the shape of it. It was supposed to be like a honeycomb hexagon shape, but it kind of... I mean, you can kind of see where I tried to do that, but... I don't know, it, uh, it kind of fell apart, didn't it? But it still looks good. We've got some nice furniture and plants and stuff in here. I think it looks good, man. I really, really do. And we have a nice safe space for going ahead and fishing in here. Unfortunately, because this is the surface jungle, I do not believe we are going to be capturing variegated lard fish. I think you need to go to the underground jungle in order to capture those bad boys. But sadly, there's rather a lot of nasty dudes that spawn down there, and I don't feel like I am wanting to risk my life anymore. Really? You allowed yourself to get killed by a jungle slime. I mean, as dying goes, that is a pretty embarrassing way to go, but there is kind of an interesting... Oh, he just spawned, like, immediately back in. <laughs> Oh, he's been reincarnated as Connor the Guide now. But yeah, as I mentioned in the last episode, if your guide is named Andrew, which is after the name of the guy who created this game in the first place, you will get a green cap vanity item, which I think is pretty awesome. So as you can see, I'm actually starting to garner a supply of double card. And as far as I can remember, the double card I'm pretty sure is used to make the ammo preservation potions in that those potions will literally just make your ammo last a bit longer because it'll make it so that there's a chance of you not using ammo. Look at this now, guys. 228 fishing power. That is unbelievable. That's the highest I think I've ever seen it, ladies and gents. Like, I'm not even kidding at this point. <laughs> That is ridiculous. And do you want to know the fun thing? After 30 minutes of crate fishing, we are just about at 100 fishing crates, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe just over, maybe just under. I'm going to keep going until my sonar and fishing potions run out because they do sort of go a little bit further than that of the crate potion total of time. Uh, but yeah, we have got a lot of crates to open up, my friends. And hopefully by opening up all of those crates, we'll have ourselves a really good boost in terms of hard mode or supply. So, was I right? Was it double cod that allows you to make the ammo preservation potions? Am I blind? Oh, no, there they are. Yeah, okay, yeah. It was double cod. Double cod and moon glow. 20% chance not to consume ammo and has an 8-minute duration. As a ranger, this thing would be fantastic. So, let's tally these up, eh? We've got 46 plus 31. That's 77. Plus uh, 12, that is 89. That would make it up to 95. And this makes it up to 102. We have 102 crates that we got in half an hour's worth of crate fishing, guys. That is fantastic. Wow. That single pixie just roamed through here and killed two of my NPCs. What a butt. That means that there's probably going to be more dudes who spawn around here now because now there's no NPCs to admit to get the spawns. What a bunch of poo. Anyways, guys, we now have the fun task of opening up the crate. So, of course, as always, we'll start off with the worst ones and work our way upwards. We're just going to spam open these things and hope that we just get ourselves some epic stuff, my friends. There we have it, eh? Look at that. We've got ourselves 11 cobalt bars. We've got some palladium ore. Yeah, we've got the anchor here as well, coming in at 93 melee damage. So after organizing all of that stuff, this is what we have in terms of our hard mode ore supply so far. A bunch of cobalt and a bunch of palladium. Let's go ahead and upgrade to mithril crates. This is where things really start to get interesting, because we should start getting ourselves maybe some higher end ores here. Look at that, we've got mithril bars and falcon blades and all sorts of stuff actually. So here we are our new updated tally in terms of how many uh, hard mode ores we have here. We now have a pretty significant amount of cobalt here. We have more than enough mithril, I'm pretty sure, to make ourselves a mithril anvil and therefore upgrade our wings. But now, my friends, now we are getting into the interesting things. Do we do the biome crates first or do we do the titanium crates first? You know what? Titanium, I would consider to be the top tier crate in the entire game. So we're going to go for the seaside crate first. 
which doesn't actually got that great of an amount of stuff. Moving on to the Bramble Crates, we have ourselves, oh, at least we're getting some high-end bait back. That's pretty cool. We've got fiberglass fishing poles. Oh, that's interesting. I could have sworn these things only gave you like 27% fishing power previously. I could be wrong, but hey-ho, it is what it is. Guys, check it out. We do actually have ourselves some Oracalcum ore here, which is great. Uh, the rest of the stuff is just sort of standard stuff you'd find in jungle chests, really, isn't it? I mean, strictly speaking, I guess that is the whole point of having these biome crates, so you can go ahead and get these things pretty easy-like. So here we are, my friends. Finally, we are going to open up the uh, top-tier crates here, the titanium crates, of which we have 12, which is pretty good. Let's open these bad boys up and see what we get. Look at that! We've got Enchanted Sword. We've got Enchanted Sundials! Hey! We were actually looking for those, weren't we? Holy guacamole! That's a good amount of titanium bars right there. Uh, we've got Adamantite and even more Adamantite. I didn't even realise you could get life crystals out of these things. Wow. All right. Well, needless to say, we're going to go ahead and uh, place down one of these uh, enchanted sundials. Here we are. Enchanted sundial. Beautiful. Oh, no. I didn't see what the freaking traveling merchant had. I didn't even see the message to say that he spawned in. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, okay, whatevs. If there was a life form analyzer, then I would have been kind of annoyed. But, oh well, we won't know either way, will we? But anyways, here we are, my friends. We now have the task of, A, upgrading up to a titanium or adamantite forge. Adamantite forge, I guess, in this case, since we have over 30 adamantite. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what exactly it is we can make out of all of the hard mode ores that we've managed to get from fishing here. So, let's start off here with a mithril anvil. We'll chuck that bad boy down. Down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, where is it? There it is, the Adamantite Forge. Yeah, baby. Now we're starting to get somewhere, aren't we? <laughs> All right, let's begin by making everything into bars. So then, everything has been made into bars. We have the highest amount of mithril, followed by cobalt, followed by titanium, interestingly. The thing I want to find out is just how many titanium bars we actually need for a full set of armor. It's 13 plus 26. That's 39 plus another 20. That's 59. We need 59 bars in order to make a full set of titanium armor. That means we need 20 more. Wow. We are going to need to do a lot more fishing to get ourselves enough titanium to the point where we can actually do this thing, my friendos. But I'll tell you what, if we do manage to do it, it'll be worth it because then we'll get the set bonus of becoming invulnerable, I think, after a certain attack or whatever. I can't remember. So yeah, we'll leave out the titanium in terms of making things. Well, we're not going to make things. That's the point. But uh, yeah, we are going to see what else we could do here. We can make full mithril armor if we wanted to, I'm pretty sure. Uh, 20, 35... 45. 45 mithril bars will grant us the ability to make full mithril armor. So do you know what? That's exactly what we're going to go ahead and do. We'll make ourselves the uh, trousers, the chest plate, and now we have a choice to make. If we are going to go for the magic set, we are going to get 60 increased total mana. Yeah. All right, let's do it, man. Let's do it. Let's put it on and see what this thing does now. Uh, I'm pretty sure this thing does more damage, though. Yeah, 170 versus 164. Uh-huh. But then again, this does have more defense to it, doesn't it? Uh, by a fairly okay amount. 31 with the Meteor versus 39 with the Mithril. Nice. And we've got reduced mana uses. So when it comes to anything that does have mana, we can shoot it for longer. Do you know what, my friends? Normally, I would never, ever do this. But for the first time, I think, in an extremely very long time, I'm going to make an Adamantite Sword. Look at this bad boy. I mean, come on. Just the pure damage increase just makes it worth it, doesn't it? Also, check it out. Even without the Feral Claws, it is now fully auto. I don't believe a long time ago it was fully auto. I think it was actually just a bog standard sword that you had to sort of click to use. So, yeah. Pretty awesome. We go ahead and reforge this. I'm sure we could go ahead and get ourselves something a little bit better. I mean, at the end of the day, anything that allows us to increase our damage output is good at the end of the day, my friendos. The only thing that I'm not able to make right now, and I didn't really consider this before, is an Orocalcum or Mithril pickaxe. 
Ah, that would have been nice to make, but hey ho, it is what it is, isn't it, my friendos? It is what it is. And of course, my friends, let's not forget about the harpy wings. Yeah, there we are. A little bit of an upgrade in terms of our wings as well. Yeah, not bad, my friends. Now we need to see if we could do a bunch of reforging, get ourselves good stuff, and then we'll probably do the comment of the day to wrap up the episode, of course. All right, Staten, don't let me down, son. Don't let me down. We are looking for anything that gives me more damage, basically. Uh, preferably without minus speed. I mean, that will definitely do the job. Ruthless, bringing it up to 79 melee damage. Very, very good. All right. Uh, ooh. Uh, guarding... I mean, are we going to have these things for a long time? Probably not. But there we are. I just spent quite a lot of money on doing that. Do we want to reforge these just because why not? I mean, it isn't going to cost a lot to do it. Uh, we're basically looking for anything with speed. Yep, agile will do. All right, well, apparently nasty gives you plus speed as well. So, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, what else do we have here that we could potentially reforge? I actually think that's about it. Yeah. All right, lucky warding, menacing warding. Yeah, everything's looking fine. Oh my god, whoever was just over here just had a very bad day or night. <laughs> So then, time to wrap up the episode, my friend knows. But of course, we do have the comment of the day here. So no Jester says, hey, Python, love the vids. What's your thoughts on possibly making bridges to combine some of the Sky Islands and turn them into, like, floating continents? Ooh, that's a, that's a cool idea, isn't it? That is a cool idea. I do already have a little bit of an idea as to what I want to do in future, though. I mean, I did mention earlier in the series that I'd very much like to make, like, a bit of a space city. So maybe we go ahead and take that space city idea and sort of combine that idea, your idea, into that. Maybe we have one island for each of the pillars worth of uh, furniture. So maybe we have one homemade Sky Island for all of the solar pillar stuffs and furniture and whatnot. So maybe we have one Sky Island for the vortex and so on and so forth. And absolutely, we could go ahead and make bridges between them. I think that's a fantastic idea. So thank you so much for that, buddy. But anyways, for now though, it is time to wrap up the episode, my friends. It's been very much a fishing, wishy-washy odd jobs episode, but I'll tell you what, it has been worth it. We've got ourselves Mithril Armor, an Adamantite Sword, and we've done a hell of a lot of fishing to get a hell of a lot of epic stuff. And look, there's a tree-shaped cloud going by. That's kind of cool. <laughs> but anyways, my friends, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, and of course you're excited to see more, please do be sure, of course, to drop a like. I'd very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thank you for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>